Let me uh, do uh, an overview of the content in, in chapter 12. This is the leadership chapter, and I'm looking at the chapter overview. I'm not going to put it on camera because the type is too small, really, to, to uh, take a look at. And the approach today is to work largely with the experiential exercise because that focuses on every element, uh, almost every element, of what's in uh, chapter 12. And we start out by distinguishing between management and leadership. And the experiential exercise asks you to think of a person whom you would consider to be a manager and then evaluate the individual on certain characteristics and then think of a person whom you would think of as a leader and assess that person on the same characteristics. And I deliberately designed the chapter with this distinction between management and leadership because I, I think it is uh, clearly the, a difference that we see uh, in organizations. Managers typically are actively controlling a given situation, something for which they are responsible. And Matt, uh, I don't understand why we're getting a continual sound from the monitor here. And I turned the volume down, but can you hear it up here? You, get, you can hear it too? And I don't want to uh, cut people off. Okay. Yes. Okay, uh, Gallup, please mute your microphone, and then when, when you're ready to ask questions, you just set it back on, and that way we don't have the background sound, and, and anybody who wants to talk at the remote sites just turns the mic on. Okay. Do we still have <laughs> Okay. Leadership is focused on change and direction of an organization, typically. And leaders are the ones that uh, c come into place at any level in an organization and actually change the direction. Now, within the, the, the research with leadership, which dates back about 100 years now, we had a whole sequence of approaches that were used. And they are the major headings in Chapter 12, and they are the major headings that are in the chapter overview. We will look at each of these, and I think we'll do it in a set of uh, sequences with the experiential exercise so that you can, can kind of live the different parts of what we're talking about. The first part and the oldest were traits. And these are like personality characteristics of individuals that were measured and, and were the traits and characteristics that distinguish leaders from non-leaders. So in the research approach, the researchers would identify a group of people who were leaders and a group of people who were not leaders and ask for assessments of those individuals based on a set of personality traits. And there were hundreds of these used over the years. And then in the uh, 1980s or so, I'd have to look up the date, I'm just guessing at that at the moment, a group of people did what we call a meta-analysis, don't memorize it, that's just what it is called, and came up with a summary of the traits that distinguish leaders from non-leaders. We'll see what those are in a moment. Well, people didn't feel the traits uh, did as good a job as what we really observe in leaders, which is behavior. And that's characteristically what we're after. And that uh, caused the growth of what are called the behavioral theories of leadership. And there are two major sets of research in those areas one at the University of Michigan and the other at o Ohio State University. I have it labeled that way because that is how that stuff uh, gets known. Then another line of research came along that's called the contingency theories of saying that the type of be leader behavior that a person has to put forward is contingent upon the nature of the situation that the person is faced with. And then, so somewhat concurrently, I actually began in 1940, there were what I call in the chapter the alternative views of leadership, and there are three. One is the leadership mystique, which goes back to the 1940s. We'll look at that, uh, these in some detail, by the way. 
The next R is transformational leadership. And notice the use of the word transform, or a form of the word transform, where leadership is usually about change, uh, shifting the direction of a system. And with the transformational notion, it's, well, maybe you're going to think I'm a little weird when I, you probably do think I'm weird anyway. But the, the animated film called Aladdin, if you go back, a Disney film. I can't remember why I was reviewing it. I really can't remember why I was reviewing it this week. But there is a sequence in there where the genie comes out of the bottle for the first time and goes through all sorts of different shapes. That's what we mean by transformational. And it's the change. And it's big stuff. And the last set are charismatic leadership theories. And that's based on the notion of charisma. Now, what I want to do is come up and give you the uh, exercise. And for the remote sites, I, we will have it on, the, on camera for you. And Matt, you can go ahead and do that now so I can orient uh, everyone. And the exercise, and this is, the exercise of course is available in, uh, online, but if you don't have a computer with you, you're not going to be able to do it. Features two items. One is a, a list of names of people, which it pops out in a drop-down form in the e-exercise. And those are the folks that I propose to you are either leaders or managers. Then the second part of the form has traits, behaviors, and other characteristics that I would like you to note of each of the people. And I'm speaking to the remote sites. Everybody here will have a piece of paper in a, in a moment. So think about traits, behaviors, and characteristics. And think primarily about traits for the moment when assessing each of these people. Now, for. <coughs> Uh, folks in here, what you're going to have to do, you maybe you can use those names, which when you did, about five people did the exercise, so that's a drop-down menu, and I cannot reproduce the drop-down menu on this form. It, uh, the system doesn't allow me to do that. The form you're getting has two parts. The first part is uh, naming a manager, and I would like to, you to do it from your experience, the person you know. And then on the back, it asks you to name a leader from your experience also. It doesn't matter whether you have worked for that individual or is it just someone that you perceive as a leader. Are you going to do it online? Yeah. I have to look where I'm going. So. Why don't you give that to him when he comes up. I'll come around on the other end to them. Ah. I was afraid I'm going to fall on my head. Yeah, I will get four. Look, careful. <laughs> it's dangerous up here. It's a long way down. Oh, you have one? So you got it. You got one. Oh, you're all set? Everybody? Okay. Okay, for the remote sites, think of the folks on that list or anybody that you care to think about and use these traits, which are the uh, traits that emerged fairly consistently in the trait approach to leadership. <coughs> and then when we get finished in here, we can have uh, general commentary from all the sources. The 
the traits uh, for the remote sites, the traits that are on that list are also on page 279 of the textbook. Let's start in here, and then for uh, folks at the remote site, uh, please, of course, call in or, or st start to talk at any time. We want to focus on the traits first, and would like to know, have a volunteer at least from this room, who, whom did you pick as a manager? The per identify the person and uh, tell us about the person who, who you picked. Anybody? Nobody wants to do it? I'll pick on somebody. Okay, upper right. This is the woman on the upper right. I don't know your name. I was speaking to you earlier. Was it a... Uh, Privately owned company? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Small or large? Very small. Very small. So the, the co owners were basically running the whole show. Right. And dominance was the biggest characteristic? I would say so. They were very micromanaging and wanted to be involved in everything and okay. everything that was going on. Now that's clearly managing, not leadership. Right. And it, you feel comfortable with that distinction. Coming over to the left, the woman right here with the glasses. Um, Summer, I um, work for the U.S. Attorney's Office under U.S. Attorney Glacier. Uh -huh. And um, he, I chose him because um, he's very intelligent, very good at like delegating tasks, but still being involved with everybody's specific cases that they're working on and stuff. And um, just being friendly to everyone in the office, the interns, all of us. Um, he so just made it a really nice working environment. With, now that's a fairly large operation. Compared to the one you're describing over here, and <laughs> you would you would describe Iglesias as a manager or a leader? A manager. A manager. Okay. Now at the at the sites, if anybody would like to uh, join in, please, with uh, any person you would uh, describe as a manager. <laughs> 